the creed we profess two articles together namely his descent into hell and his resurrection from the dead Christ went down to hell and from there he descended he resurrected he resurrected to life so um fear hell does not mean the place where the <coughs> cursed ones are but the hell does mean the place where a holy fathers of the old old testament stayed until the resurrection of christ we you know as a result of sin as a result of the first sin the whole humanity is under the curse of sin until jesus died and resurrected to life and opened the gates of heaven nobody was allowed to enter the heavenly abode so uh, in catechism 633 says ccc 633 says scripture calls the abode of the dead to which the dead christ went down hell sheol uh, such is the case for all the dead so i'm sorry sheol in hebrew or hades in greek because those who are there are deprived of the vision of god such is the case for all the dead whether evil or righteous while they await the redeemer which does not mean that there it does not mean that their lot is identical as jesus shows through the parable of the poor man lazarus who was received into abraham's bosom it is precisely these holy souls who awaited their savior in abraham's bosom whom christ the lord delivered when he descended into hell so jesus descended into that place called hades hell to deliver the damned so not to deliver the damned not to destroy the hell of damnation but to free the just who had gone before him so um this is a article of our faith that we believe and we profess that jesus went down to that place which is also called hell but it is not identical to those to the place where the damned lived but this is a place where the just live and yes and jesus came when there and preached the gospel to these people called the just and uh, delivered them from there so um uh the the greatest the one of the greatest theologians of the of the modern times balthasar he says uh descent into hell is the center of christology because the descent is the final point reached by the kenosis and the kenosis is the supreme expression of the inner trinitarian love the christ of holy saturday is the consummate icon of what god is like
one who was raised at Easter is not primarily the crucified, but rather the one who for us went down into hell. Balthasar stresses Christ's solidarity with the dead, his passivity, his finding himself in, the, in a situation of total estrangement and alienation from the Heavenly Father. So uh, this is very, very, very interesting because, you know, on the cross, at the last moment, Jesus cried out loudly, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? And we know uh, the basis of Trinitarian theology is that Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are always living together. They can never be separated. So why did then Jesus cry and said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? And the answer is the, the wages of sin is death. The scripture says the wages of sin is death. Death in the biblical sense means first of all the estrangement from God the separation from God because God is the life the source of life so the real meaning of death is not the physical death of course it is a part of that death the real meaning of death is separation, estrangement from God. And the whole humanity is under sin. So everyone is separated from God. Jesus, the sinless one, is not separated from God, but he is taking upon himself that punishment even though it was momentarily so when jesus cried father father why have you forsaken me he was experiencing that greatest sorrow of being separated from god it is not what he deserved it is what we deserve and jesus on behalf of us even suffered that suffering for a moment. He really experienced that greatest suffering of being separated from God the Father. So uh, his kenosis, so that's a part of his kenosis. And Balthasar says uh, the kenosis is, is the supreme expression of the inner Trinitarian love. And God so loved us that he not only allowed his son to die on the cross, but he allowed his son to go into hell where the presence of God is not present. So uh, God loved the sinful humanity to that extent that he even suffered estrangement from God. But he went there to redeem the chest. So, and you know, you know, you probably remember when Jesus died, we read in the Holy Scriptures, especially the Gospel of Matthew, the temple veil was torn. The temple veil was torn without anybody's manual touching. It was torn from top to bottom. This veil 
was an icon, a symbol for the Jewish people to remember that by the sin they were not in communion with God. They were in separation from God. So this holy of the, the veil uh, that was hung between the, uh, the between, in front of the holy of holies always remembered the, reminded them that they are separated from God. But when Christ died, this veil was torn. Means that separation from God is now taken away. We are we are we are reconciled with God. So all these are connected very much. Jesus' death and his descent into hell, preaching the gospel to the just, and they were saved. So. It, it all these tell us that Jesus is the only hope of human salvation. Without his death and resurrection, even the just could not go up to heaven. Praise the Lord. Now, now we come to the, uh, the second part of this article, namely, we believe in the procession of Christ. Uh, we just read the first Corinthians chapter 15, uh, verse 3. Let's, let's look at verse 3. Uh, Paul says, I delivered to you as of first importance what I also received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scripture, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Praise the Lord. So Paul underscores the fact that Christ, that Christ died and resurrected is of the first importance. So this is the central theme of the entire gospel, Jesus' death and resurrection. And he also mentions that he received, he received, you know, in, if we look at the Galatians, Paul uh, speaks so highly of him, saying that he received the mandate to preach the gospel, and he received also the gospel not from the apostles. He always uh, claimed that he received the gospel straight from the Lord. And he, he repeatedly says that he did not uh, receive it from the uh, Peter or some others. He received everything from Jesus himself. But about this part, he says, I received, for I delivered to you as a first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and so on and so on, and he, uh, he, uh, he was raised on the third day. So, um, this, is a, this is a clear evidence that the, resurrect, the faith in the resurrection of Christ was very, very old. Maybe at the at AD 30 or some, Paul got converted. Even before that, this truth was prevailing there. So when uh, Paul was catechized at Damascus, 
by the by the disciples of Christ, he was told that Christ's death and resurrection is a tradition. It was an age-old tradition spread among the disciples that Christ died for our sins and he and he uh, he was raised on the third day. Actually, that was a confessional confessional truth. That means that was a, a kind of a very substantial proclamation of the Christian faith. They profess these two words together. Christ died for our sins. He was buried and he was raised on the third day. So Paul, even at the beginning of his conversion, received this age-old tradition that Christ was risen from the dead. And again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 12 says, Now, if Christ is priest as raised from the dead, sorry, um, but if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is vain. So Paul, stresses the point that the resurrection is the, the foundation of Christian faith. If Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. So, um, the resurrection of Jesus is therefore the center, the foundation of Christian faith. But unfortunately, we are tender to reflect and pray over the passion of Christ more than the resurrection of Christ. I was thinking, you know, in our in our communities, we spend, I think it is it is same in all over the world. We spend 50 days of or 40 days of Lent mostly reflecting on the passion of Christ. But at the end of Lent, it, it seems that it comes to an end. But in fact, it doesn't end there. It continues. Next 50 days. Until the Feast of Pentecost. So the day from the resurrection. Until the day of Pentecost. Which we call that time. The, uh, the period of Christ's resurrection. But often people miss that. We, we, with great importance, we celebrate the land, but we do not celebrate the Easter season as it should be. So, uh, in fact, the Easter season is more important than the land because the Christ's resurrection is more important than his death. Jesus' incarnation, passion, and death are all oriented to Christ's resurrection. It is by his resurrection from the dead that Paul says their preaching became meaningful. Suppose God became man and he suffered and he died and he was buried. Suppose he was not risen. What value 
the gospel has. The apostles could not even preach a word about Christ. Because Jesus died like everybody else. No, Jesus, after his death, he was raised from the dead. That is the heart of Christian preaching. That's why Peter, in all his sermons, we read in the Acts of the Apostles, he always trusts the resurrection part. He told the people, you kill the Redeemer, but God raised him from the dead, and we are the witnesses of his resurrection. So Christ's resurrection actually gave the first disciples and apostles the power to give witness to Christ even before death, because they were very sure that Jesus was raised from the dead. And um, so the resurrection of Christ is very significant for Christian faith. And Paul says, our hope, our hope in our resurrection totally is based on Christ's resurrection. That means there is no meaning for our life if we don't have a hope that we will be resurrected with Christ. And Christ's resurrection is an icon of our faith and hope that we will one day enter into that redeemed, glorious state. Praise the Lord. Now, uh, all that Jesus taught and all that he did were confirmed by his resurrection. If Jesus was not raised from the dead, who will care his teachings? His teachings were totally different from the teachings of the Old Testament. But by his resurrection, all what he thought and did were ratified. Now, we may, we may, uh, we may sometimes doubt about the historicity of Christ's resurrection. Often I heard people saying, nobody was there to see how Jesus was resurrected. Nobody could see uh, the scene of resurrection. So how can you that Jesus was really risen? And the catechism uh, in six, three, nine, Catechism of the Catholic Church, six, three, nine, says, the mystery of Christ's resurrection is a real event with manifestations that were historically verified as a New Testament based witness. Praise the Lord. So the church officially teaches that resurrection of Christ is a real event. It is historically verified on the basis of the New Testament witnesses. So it really happened in the literal sense. Some people argue that it was only a spiritual reflection of the disciples. Some people say it was a mystical or spiritual experience of the disciples because they were in, the, they were in deep love with Christ so much so that they 
visualize the visualize or the they had a mystical experience that Christ was risen, but that is not true. They never, never expected resurrection. Even though Christ's uh, enemies expected his resurrection, that's why they went to Pilate and said, uh, uh, you, may you may have to guard, you may have to guard the sepulcher, the tomb, uh, and also seal the tomb uh, because they were afraid that his enemies were afraid because when Jesus was alive, he already told them that uh, on the third day, he will be raised to life. So the enemies never forgot that word. So they were very afraid. That's why uh, the first and the last experience in the whole history of the world that the 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 the, the police police waiting on a to near a tomb they were afraid they were they were they were very sure that jesus will come out of the tomb but pilate very learned man he certified that jesus is dead so he did not give in to their demand. He said, I don't care about this. I won't, I won't send any soldiers to keep watch for a dead person. If you want, you can do that. So they, they placed their own soldiers, the religious police, to guard the dead person. So the enemies expected the resurrection, but disciples never expected. We have so many proofs for that. You know, Mary Magdalene and the holy women went to the sepulchre, not expecting to see a risen Lord, but to simply embark or, you know, uh, to put that, um, to, to, to uh, show their reverence to the body, the dead body. Um, so, because it was at the time of Sabbath, they could not, uh, venerate the body as they wanted to. So they went there, not with the expectation of resurrection, but to see the dead body. And also, the when the holy women reported to Peter and John about the resurrection, actually the disciples uh, did not believe. They were skeptic. They were really skeptic. They never believed the report of the holy women. And we know about Thomas. When the disciples, all the disciples together told Thomas, we have seen the risen Lord, he did not believe. He did not believe until he touched on the body of Christ. And when Jesus appeared to the, uh, all the disciples, they felt that they were seeing a ghost. And Matthew sadly reports that even during the last apparition or the last appearance, some doubted. So uh, Jesus um, um, actually 11 times he appeared after resurrection or after the death, Jesus ap appeared 11 times. So Mary, to Peter, to all the disciples, to uh, seven disciples at the seashore, and to 500, and so on. But even then, some doubted. Matthew, 20, Matthew 28, 17, we read, some doubted. So all this tells us that disciples never expected uh, that Jesus would uh, rise from the dead. Therefore, in the Catechism uh, 644, 644, we read, therefore, the hypothesis that the resurrection was produced by the apostles' faith will not hold up. So well, some people argue, even today argue that uh, that was not a real event that was all like make up 
of the disciples. But the Catechism says, the hypothesis that the resurrection was produced by the apostles' faith will not hold up because the apostles or the disciples never respected the resurrection. Then the Catechism says, on the contrary, their faith in the resurrection was born under the action of divine grace from the direct experience of the reality of the Son Jesus. So they themselves experience the risen Christ. So we shall never doubt about the historicity of Christ's resurrection. Even though, uh, uh, even though the none of the evangelists explain how he was resurrected. The uh, Pope Benedict the Sixteenth, in his classical book, Jesus of Nazareth, he says the reason. He says, because it is beyond our human realm. The resurrection of Christ is a, a unique event that happened. So for Benedict's for Benedict XVI says that the why the evangelists miss writing the details of how Jesus was risen, he says it is beyond human understanding. It is uh, beyond our human problem. It in the in the divine abode divine problem. So it is beyond human uh, narration. It is beyond human explanation. That doesn't mean that it didn't happen. So Pope Benedict XVI argues that even though the details of resurrection are not given in the gospel because it was not possible. It was not possible, but it really happened. First of all, we read in Matthew's gospel, the angel from heaven appeared to the to the uh, the women as, uh, and proclaims that you mean I know you are searching for Jesus of Nazareth, but he is not here. He is risen. So it is not an opinion of any human being. Matthew reports that. It was proclaimed from heaven. An angel first who it was an angel who first proclaimed the incarnation of Christ to Mary. The angel who appeared to the shepherds to reveal the mystery of Jesus' birth. Now it is the same angel who came from heaven and told the women that Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. So uh, the evangelist gives that report. So we should not doubt about the, the reality or the historicity of resurrection. Now, uh, the church clearly tells that Jesus was risen in the body. In the same body which was used for his crucifixion. He was risen from the dead with the same body, with the same body, but glorified body. Even though the body Jesus has after resurrection is glorified, it is the same body in which he suffered the death. That's why when he appeared to Thomas, he invited Thomas to come and put his fingers on the side. 
and also touch on both hands because it is the same Jesus, the same Jesus of Nazareth who is risen, but his body is glorified. Now, uh, the theology says that the resurrected Jesus took on a new mode of existence that went beyond simple restoration to life. You know, take a look at uh, the resurrection of Lazarus. That was only a restoration of life. That was only a coming back to life which Lazarus had before. But Jesus' resurrection is entirely different. Jesus took on a new mode of existence that went beyond simple restoration to life. That's why he could appear suddenly whenever he wanted. That's why he could walk through doors and walls. At the same time, we know he ate with the disciples more than one time. He preached to them. He preached to them about 40 days after resurrection about the kingdom of God. But we know there was something mysterious. You know, when Mary Magdalene saw her first, she could not recognize him. She thought he was a gardener. Again, the disciples on the road to Emmaus, they saw him as only another traveler. They could not recognize him. Even, you know, remember at the uh, after resurrection, the seven disciples went for fishing and Jesus came to the seashore and none of the disciples could recognize Jesus except John. So there is, uh, the, the, the resurrection of Jesus is, of course, both transcendent and partly even. He has a body, a resurrected body, but at the same time, he is transcendent. He is here among us, and also he is with the Father in heaven. After the resurrection, Jesus' body, though real, is not subject to suffering. That's why Paul, in the book of Hebrews, says he died only once. He suffered only once in his body. The resurrected body is not subject to suffering anymore. So, uh, uh, Christ still has humanity. Still, Christ has his humanity. But this humanity can no longer be confined to earth. It belongs only to the Father's divine realm. So, uh, the church invites us to believe, believe that Jesus is risen. We cannot process everything with our human intellect because it is beyond our human realm. It, it belongs to the Father's divine realm. So that's why the church for the last 2,000 years keep Believing, 
that Jesus is risen from the dead. Body is now glorified and eternally. And another teaching we have about the resurrection of Christ is that it gives a foretaste of what it will mean for the redeemed humanity to enter the glory of heaven. So Christ is a pioneer. We are following him to that same glorified state. Catechism 6, 5, 8. Christ, the firstborn from the dead, is the principle of our own resurrection, even now by the justification of our souls. So, when we proclaim that Christ is risen from the dead, we also proclaim that we, the redeemed, we, the redeemed, will enter the glory of heaven. Whenever uh, resurrection is preached, whenever the church preached the resurrection of Christ, great miracles happen. Uh, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So the early church was very clear that believing in the resurrection of Christ is the requirement, the requirement to be saved. Paul clearly says, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So, uh, during this Easter season, we reflect and continue to believe more and more and more in this great article of faith that Jesus is risen, actually we uh, experience the redemption more. Of course, we know from our own experience, we are not completely saved. We are not totally delivered. We are still under the bondage of sin and sickness and all those side effects of sin. The more we proclaim and believe in the resurrection of Christ, as we heard now in Romans 10, 9, we come to the deeper experience of the freedom. We come to the we come to experience more the freedom Jesus bought by his death and resurrection. So uh, uh, it would be it would be a, a great thing to spend these fifty days of Easter season with a special intention of a total freedom from the world and from sin and from our own selfishness to so that great freedom Jesus has bought. You know, in Catechism 297, we worship of true one God, 
sets man free from the worship of one of the one god sets man free from turning in on himself from the slavery of sin and the idolatry of the world so these are the three bondages common bondages turning in on himself from the slavery of sin and the idolatry of the world and we all have some kind of slavery in these three areas that means selfishness slavery of sin and the attachment to the world so three attachments attachments to self attachment to sinful pleasures and attachment the good things of the world it is about this that john in his first letter chapter 2 verse 16 says three bondages attachment attachment to sins for pleasures and attachment to the good things of the world and jesus came died and rose from the dead to set us free so let's uh try to worship the risen lord to reflect on the resurrection of christ we shall not stop reflecting on the passion of christ because passion death and resurrection go together the passion death and resurrection of christ go together often we do the prayer of stations of the cross during the lent and then after resurrection we never do that here in our retreat center of the stations of the cross every single day our morning prayer is stations of the cross uh, i try I, i i try to understand it as an a prayer of love because jesus died so much for us and we don't care about it so every time we uh, reflect on the suffering of christ we receive a lot of grace because by reflection on the suffering of christ we get more attached to him that helps us to say no to the world so the suffering part of christ christ are they both go together go hand in hand so uh, maybe maybe we can uh, uh we can try this prayer of sessions of the cross all these 50 days of easter and also worship the resurrected lord take some time pray the risen lord along with doing the sessions of the cross for 50 days i think that will be a wonderful experience at the at the pender course i remember when i was in little rock we did the same thing i think we uh, spent seven wednesdays seven wednesdays during the lent on reflecting on the christ passion and after the easter we continued that seven wednesday evenings to reflect on the resurrection and the holy spirit and so on so at the pentecost all those who attended those sessions at pentecost everyone had a 
wonderful experience of God. So uh, and I think we can personally or virtually do this during this year. Uh, do, do, doing the stations of the cross every day of this Easter season and also praising and worshiping the glorified Lord Christ uh, all these days to, uh, to prepare for the great feast of Pentecost in 2021. Um, I think we shall close this reflection by now and uh, have a small worship session as we used to do. Uh, I think we don't have music today, but we can have some music uh, otherwise. As we, as as I um, bring Eucharist to the altar, you can we can sing a song, maybe the. Song we first heard the about the resurrection, maybe that's a wonderful song, I think, uh, as we like. Okay, then anything else now to say, or maybe after the after the adoration, we can speak a little bit. Okay, praise the Lord. Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Set us, Lord, free from all sickness, from all sadness, from all unfreedom. We want, Lord, we want the freedom you bought by your death and resurrection. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Worship you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We lift up our hearts. Oh, Lord, you are risen. You are risen. You are alive. You are alive. You are alive in the world. You are alive in, the, in our midst. You are with us, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. The fact that you are risen and that you live with us, set us free from all fears, from all anxieties, from all worries. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Increase our faith, Lord. Increase our faith. As apostles prayed, we also pray, Lord. Increase our faith. Give us more faith to believe in your death and resurrection that set us free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. We bring to you, Lord, all our unfreedoms. We bring to you all our weaknesses. We bring to you all our sinful nature. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Set us free, Lord. Make us free, Lord. We want your freedom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to live with you all the time. We want to live in the state of grace all the time. Lord, give us. Give us that blessing. Give us that, that blessing to live with you all the time. To live in the state of grace, sanctifying grace. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, we praise you. 
praise you lord 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 she thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you lord we adore you lord worship you lord thank you lord thank you jesus thank you jesus the lord gives us a, a scripture a scripture uh, philippians 1 21 For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Thank you, Lord. 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 Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord increases our faith in our own resurrection. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord gives another scripture, Romans 8, verse 11. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give you. life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit who dwells in you thank you lord thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you lord praise you lord praise you lord uh, the lord uh, give eight persons of us an increased grace in prayer that, that means uh, god is given a God has given a special grace to pray more deeply. That means to have a more intimate relationship with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord also gives some of us a deep desire to work hard for the eternal life. Thank you, Jesus. The Lord uh, increases uh the faith of three persons who had been um losing their faith so to speak praise the lord praise the lord four people are uh getting more freedom from the wealth of this world that jesus says praise the lord praise the lord the lord comes to Uh, families uh, especially to six families where there was not much peace and the lord says that three people are given the uh, the uh, heavenly aid to sleep well at night one person who had been who has been taking medicine for depression for the last three years is now being healed somebody who had an accident and had an injury on the leg is being healed now thank you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus praise you jesus these people who are always distracted by the things of this life are given the grace to concentrate on jesus christ all the time in their thoughts and in their imaginations praise you lord Hallelujah praise you lord thank you jesus thank you jesus praise you lord hallelujah hallelujah jesus 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 praise you lord praise you lord uh, uh, the lord says that uh, uh, we are given the special grace to say the name of jesus often and often during our day and uh, uh, today while we are praying in front of the holy eucharist the lord asked for people to give up using the liquor uh, completely and the lord gives them that grace also somebody who has a disease in the intestine is being healed two people who have a doubtful uh, nature who doubts everything especially about the faith matters they are given the grace of faith somebody has given the blessing 
to buy a new vehicle. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Somebody who has a block in the heart is being healed today. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Uh, three people are given the grace of vision of the risen Lord. Somebody who has pain um, on the leg or some kind of pain on the in, in very deep pain is being healed today. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We adore you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. You are our Redeemer. You are our Savior. You have been suffering for us a lot. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We praise you, Lord, for your concern. We thank you, Lord, for your infinite love. Thank you, Jesus, for redeeming us. Thank you, Jesus, for redeeming us. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Anything to share, Rita? Hello, yes. Yes. So, Father, you were saying about um, praying through the stations throughout this Easter season until Pentecost. <laughs> <laughs> that was my personal suggestion because uh, you know that, that we read in the scriptures that we proclaim the death of the Lord until he, until he comes, right? In the, yes. I think in the Holy Mass we say, we proclaim the death of the Lord until, until he comes again. Yes. So, so the suffering and death of Christ is not to be limited to a particular season right but it is it is to be prayed over yeah uh, so we have a practice in our retreat center the morning prayer is always the sessions of the cross ah so, so you have i have the one the i have the audio that you sent me yes to share i haven't shared it out yet uh, i think uh we with this in a very few days we did that it, it may have so many uh, you know uh, limitations but that's a new new stations of the cross uh -huh. uh, the lord the lord inspired to write 
and uh, i did that in our language then our our <laughs> our youth translated into in english so uh, the tune is set in our language maybe later on you some of you can give a tune to that song <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to try and I'll, I, I can share it to whoever wants it. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, but anyway, you, you can use that phrase and yeah. later on you can use that song also, I think. <laughs> yeah. I'll do my best. <laughs> yes, yes. So, uh, Daffy, you so, want to you know, something? Well, I was just going to say sometimes when uh, like praying the stations uh -huh. I do I do better starting and then I get to a point where I just stop and because I'm I'm saturated in my mind and in my spirit and uh. I don't know if that's a, a deterrent or not but it's it's like eating rich food and at some point you're 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 filled up and you want to savor it so to speak instead of <laughs> rushing to get through it if that makes any sense yeah yeah i think so. that makes sense because we call these uh, mysteries of god mysteries we cannot uh, grasp or part of the depth of what god did mm -hmm. so yet we continue to reflect on that because it's an act of love as i said you know yes yes because i i do remember uh, about my mother who suffered a lot for our for us children because we are all under you know very poverty so uh, the i experience more love of her when i reflect on how much she suffered for us That makes so, sense. Uh, yeah. Yes. So, so we say the mother's love is uh, is the greatest love in the world because a mother suffers more than anybody else. Mm -hmm. So yes. also Christ Christ suffering and death touches more. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, Father, the other comment I wanted to make. I don't know that I have ever truly pondered the difference in the resurrected body of Christ as far as what you read from the catechism about his humanity not being confined to earth, you know, yes. that he could, it, it, uh, that is so profound to me. And yes. I, I mean, I'm gonna. I feel like I'm being called to, to um, chew on that in my spirit. Um, yes, that's true. Yes, I it's, had, it's amazing. I had never thought about Christ retaining his humanity in heaven. Yes, he he do he does it. Because he is the mediator between God and the humanity. Mm -hmm. Only in his humanity he can mediate us before God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, it is a glorified humanity. Right. Yes. Right. Right. So, I mean, huh. the, 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 the value of a human body becomes more and more clear. The, the, the importance of our human nature. He glorified our weak, sinful human nature by taking upon himself our human nature. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, and it's a perfect reflection to us of the Father's love. And yes. that's when we can stand before God and accept and receive 
the depth of his love as our father because we know Jesus. Yes. Yes. Of course. That's the only way. And, mm -hmm. and we are also in the same process as we age, you know, day by day. Mm. <laughs> we are also taking part of the suffering and going to the <laughs> end for the glorification. So every sickness we feel in our body has a meaning and significance. Mm -hmm. the, the limitations... It we just lost it. Pardon me. And then we just we just surrender it. So I, I mean, it is closely connected to Christ's suffering. Mm -hmm. You know, oriented to His resurrection. Mm -hmm. Father, I'm kind of connecting it back to uh, a couple of months ago when you talked about we our being Christ's body. Yes. You know. When he yes. is bodily assumed into heaven, that's us too. Yes. I mean, that connection yes. with us is there. Yes, because Paul says he is the head. Right. Uh, and we are his members. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the members naturally goes to where the head went. It's nice but, that uh, we don't have a choice. <laughs> <laughs> but we have a choice in the sense that if we keep on sinning we, are, we don't have this <laughs> mm. we should be in the state of grace you know father I don't know how it was for you and you know Rita did not grow up as a child in the church but any church yeah what, yeah and but you know we were not raised hearing it said that we should desire to be a saint yeah we never we are never taught like that in the past that's true and it's such a a freedom now to accept the universal call to holiness that we have Right. And and to aspire to that and not feel um, you feel connected to people in that yes. desire and in the work to become holy. Yes, I think that is uh, one of the biggest uh, gift of Second Vatican Council. Yes, yes. And, and we have so many examples of that uh, two young, one young boy, what's his name, 15 years old, who came uh, It's not Mark, Marcus. Ca 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 Carlos, Carlos. Carlos, yes. Italy. Another girl, her name is Tierra Luci, 19 years old girl, Italian girl. She is also a blessed now. Yeah. We are going to, in our new new chapel of Mary, we are going to have these two young... Uh, oh! Saints, which, oh. <laughs> For your yeah, abide? No, yeah. No, no, I, we, yeah, no, no. We are building, as you know, we are building a, a shrine for our lady. So in that chapel, we selected these two young saints' pictures in the Onda, uh, on the uh, sanctuary or the altar. Wonderful. Wow. <laughs> Wonderful. To remind that everyone is called to holiness. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Praise the Lord. So praise, praise the Lord. 